Kai Podcast, week one of the winter 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stratton. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Yo! Next up, we have Taylor. Hello! Oh. And finally, we have Justin. Salutations! Alright, so we got first season of the new anime, anime um, series of the year. Uh, we don't have much anime news to go on this week besides, I guess... Um, well, right now it's kind of like a state of emergency in Japan or mainly Tokyo, so a lot of um, so a lot of anime events are getting canceled or delayed. Um, the only big one is that uh, the midnight screen of Evangelion movie was canceled, but I'm sure they're still gonna have the movie. So you know, all you fans have waited eight years, at least in Japan, can still go see it. And that's like the only big one I know that's happening this week. And now we're gonna start with uh, Promise Neverland uh, season two. This is the first episode. Of the second season just aired, um, so like going off back off where the first uh, season ended, we got we got the kids escaping from the orphanage, and then right we go right into the action with like them being chased by the beasts, and then we meet the two uh, new characters that were introduced in this episode, and so they're setting up a lot of things for the upcoming season. But before we get into that, I just I'll just open the floor for anyone else who wants to give their thoughts because I know you guys have a lot of things you want to say for Promise Neverland. Well, for for all my Spanish speakers, me gusta mucho. Okay, that <laughs> roughly translates to best show of all time. <laughs> roughly, roughly. He's right. Okay. He's right. I'll confirm. Yep. Um. I think it was a really strong episode from the get-go. We got the preview of that giant black beast just chasing them down the forest. And then, obviously, they cut back to an earlier point. But I liked it a lot. Don't ever trust people with robes. That's my good old uh, family value. So uh, we'll see how these underground beasts turn out. But overall, I just thought it was a really strong episode. But you guys dig into some details. Um... These kids are 12 years old the <laughs> oldest ones right yep this kid like they're solving things and deciphering morse code i've never been able to decipher the letter a in my life in morse code okay they're 12 and two this kid ray is out running a 10 foot beast two of them for like who knows how far like three miles or some shit these kids whoa, are whoa. legit legit superhumans do like the fact of like how they animated Ray looking so exhausted at the end of that though. I really like that they included that. Like they 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 it like he he was dying panting. And so it showed that it he was running as hard as he possibly could. Yes, could a 12-year-old outrun those? No, but still. I like that they included it. And like I don't really mind that they're supposed to be geniuses because they're basically raised to be that way. The thing I think that irks me is like okay so you can like you can teach somebody to be book smart i guess but like when it comes to connecting different clues together and figuring out what's going on like that that takes a different type of intelligence that i would not think that they'd be wanting to teach these kids um and that even if they did they're still really young it's hard to put all of those like circumstantial evidence together of what's happening in their world the way that they're doing it in my opinion but i mean who cares the show's great it was a great first episode to, to to Brian's point, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, we had so many distractions growing up. It's like the difference between mm-hmm. being raised in public education and then being raised in someone's household where, like they said, they're preparing you to be eaten. Uh, eaten, eaten. And uh, the main way they do that is by judging you based on your capability of intelligence, right? So your IQ score. So their whole, remember, they were like daily testing and all they ever do for fun is play tag. I don't remember them playing any other game besides tag. So I think their endurance and their intelligence is way higher than most. And I think under these situations, you got to be that smart. Hence why they're leading the crop. It's not like every one of those kids is that smart. So in defense of the show that I find pretty awesome, I'll say that part. It, It really did not bother me at all because I think... Come on, man. We're dealing with people who got bells and waters for dinner. Like, that's all they're getting. So, yep. The one thing I'll say is I constantly find myself just really only caring about Ray, Emma, Norman, the rest of the younger kids, besides Phil. Phil is the OG, the one kid that, you know, stayed behind. Yeah, back at the orphanage. Yeah, yeah, back at the orphanage to kind of just keep an eye on everything. Yeah, Phil is awesome. Uh, But 
uh, what I like to call Aunt Jemima, the one younger girl who, in the end of season one, was afraid to cross the uh, the rope bridge or whatever, and then also in this <laughs> first episode fell down when they're running away from the Beast Monitor. I was just like, God damn it, Jemima. Like, again, what, can you just, you just need to be you go gone. You know, you're dead weight. I hate to say it. <laughs> Yep. It's so, really yeah, brutal having to done. try to like fight and run for your life with a bunch of like six year olds, five year olds. Right? But I liked the fact that Ray mentioned that in season one. Mm-hmm. Like, because it, it's realistic, right? I mean, I've, th- I've thought that watching every zombie show ever. Like, these people are like running around with like babies or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, that thing's going to get everybody killed. And I like the fact that Ray brought it up. And yeah, you're not wrong. That'll be part of their struggle. Watch. They'll only like ethnic kid in that group. He's gonna die first. Just wait. He's, he's athletic and he can teach the kids how to play tag, but he's gonna get stabbed to death. There's Watch. more than one. There's the older one and then there's the younger girl. I don't. But oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you're right. glasses in the other one. Yeah. I stand corrected. Well, the one kid who's you know <laughs> who didn't believe them for. I, I have a feeling he's gonna die this season. He's gonna be like, "Hey guys, I think we could trust these underground aliens completely." And then he's gonna you know get close to that girl with the really nasty feet. <laughs> She's gonna cut him up. Just wait. That's my prediction. Um, so one of the questions I had for this show too was was um Minerva like because I forgot like who like who he was from season one. So like. Is he supposed to be like a human that helps him out, or is he like one of these like one of the demons who are against like Not the said. cattle farm and like and trying to help that way too? Or what do you think? I think all we really know about Minerva is that he's kind of like the sole bastion for humanity in this world, where you know he's obviously provided like the books and all these other uh, breadcrumbs to have people uncover what the farm system is and how to kind of survive in this world. So. Um, I think that's all we really know about him at this time. Yeah, I don't remember anything besides them alluding to the fact through the book hints that, oh, there must be someone that's on our side. Do we trust like yeah. these new two new characters? Do you think that they're actually out there to help out the kids or do they have some other um, intentions in mind? I feel like they're going to be do. like... They're going to help them, and they're, they're going to have their own purpose, their own thing that they want to accomplish, but I feel like ultimately they're going to help them. I would say I've created the whole backstory for the show already in my mind. Go, go I think <laughs> aliens were looking for a place to feed, just like that Twilight Zone episode where they come to Earth and they say, hey, to serve man, we're going to give you guys this book. And then the big twist at the end is they're just taking humans up to serve them for dinner. Hey, but so... I think majority of aliens are pretty bad and evil, just like, you know, Transformers, the Decepticons rule by majority. And then the Autobots are like the 10 few robots left. Well, in this case, I think there's an underground network of them. And you got Harriet Tubman, a.k.a. Dr. Minerva, leading that rebellion secretly, right? The only way that it can, because I don't think these things really have genders. So I think uh, you've got this like, 20, maybe 10% of these aliens are like, wow, what we do is wrong. We go to different planets, we look for food supplies, and then we feast and we go to other planets. So that's my prediction is you have this underground network of rebels who are like, nah, we don't want to be the evil aliens anymore. We want to live in peace. I mean, I actually feel like that's accurate, probably. It sounds like the, yeah, the what it sounds like the show is going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, that I like the fact that it feels a little... Like, there were some elements of this episode that reminded me of Maiden Abyss. With, like, the... Like, everything we've seen up until this point... And correct me if I'm wrong, I, I haven't touched this show since it last aired. Uh, I don't remember there being any creatures in the show that we hadn't seen other than the demons. No, this is, like, the first um, like, time we've we've seen, like... Yeah. Especially them talking. Because I was, I was not expecting them to be talking in a language that you would understand them. I thought it'd be, like, more, like, alien language, but... Mm-hmm. They're talking normally, so that's the first time we've seen them in this in this episode or this series. Yeah, yeah, there was that, but then the, it also just showed like all of the like local wildlife and uh, plants and stuff like that, and it was obviously not something that exists here in our planet. So I thought that was kind of cool because it kind of turned it into an adventure thing for me as well, which I figured it would a little bit with them escaping, but it it definitely gave me some made an abyss vibes that I liked a lot. True that. And I like how they weaved in them knowing about the plants 
through children's books. Yeah. So Dr. Minerva obviously planned out like how to feed information mm -hmm. in a secretive way. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is from that one story. This is the water plant. Yay. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> so I thought that was actually a really nice touch. And I agree mm -hmm. with you. It does give me some Made in Abyss vibes. Um, but I like it. I was terrified of what's going to happen to the story outside of the kind of like Attack on Titan. When it went out outside the wall, you're like, where is this going to go? I don't know. I like being in the wall. Take me back to the wall. So that's why I was like, and plus, as much of a villain as she was, was it Isabel or Isabella? Isabella, Isabella. right? Yeah. Isabella. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, I thought Isabella was a wonderful character. Like, I was glued to the screen every time she was on. I was like, how is she going to yeah. combat these smart kids? So I actually found this really nice, and I'm curious to see how things are going to pan out from here. But obviously, these uh, these aliens, they just dirty. Yeah, like, I wonder how they're going to keep the tension from season one, because, like, it was perfect setup in the house, because there's, like, very little you can go to. So, like, it was easy to trap people. So I'm wondering how they keep that tension here outside the wall when you have a lot of space to explore. I think I miss some of the elements of like the head, the, like the head games that happened from last season. I feel like that's not going to be so much of a thing this season. I mean, they were all very intimately in the same space, like basically trying they, to outsmart they to, each like, other. Pretend, like they didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. too. So. Exactly. And I really liked that element. And I'm sure I'm going to like this show even without that, but I, I do miss that. Like, I like the, the adventure aspect, but I'm going to miss that part. And, uh, like that, yeah. the whole, yeah, that whole tension of, like, of, if the, of the, the farm, like, that, that, mm -hmm. what drew me to, to this show. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it ha handles it this season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I'm waiting for my boy off. Norman. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder if he's going to sh show up. I mean, we're all assuming he's pretty much alive. So I think we're assuming he's going to show yeah. up. But yeah. sorry, Taylor, you had another point. Uh, I got side railed by Norman. Don't worry about it. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for is that tie in with Norman because, you know, he, they're using his genius level skills for something. Watch when, when they can't catch these guys, they're going to rely on Norman. And then that's where the head games are going to come in. That's my prediction. So that'll be exciting. Yes. yes. What is their uh... prediction, though? This aren't in stone. <laughs> I was just going to end up, uh, was the revelation from the end of season one when you learn Ray is Isabella's daughter, was that a big shock factor for you guys? Uh, Our son, yeah. sorry. It was yeah. for me. For me, yeah. <laughs> I got it. I, I just, I, it was more of like, man, that's fucked up. Like, all this yeah. stuff happened mm -hmm. and he has to run away from his own mom. Like, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, it, yes. was. it shocked me. I was like, holy shit, this is the most amazing episode ever. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, the more shocking thing for me was like at the end when they all escaped and like, and like, Isabella said, you know, it's all over now, and she had like, the ropes in her hands. I thought she was like, mm -hmm. gonna like hang herself or like, jump off the wall yeah. or something. I thought that's so yep. I thought that's how it was gonna end, but Same. like, so I'm surprised it didn't go that dark. Yeah, maybe it happened I agree. off screen. I'm nah, just... nah, Isabella's too chill for that. She probably got eaten though. I think she got eaten. Like, if she didn't <laughs> kill herself, I think she got eaten. Which that makes me kind of sad. Like, I wish we could have her back later well, on I mean, for some I... sort of. That's the type of show or that's, that's the type of show that is. It's just fucked up. She has a lot of intel on those kids, so they could use her for that. You just don't know that's with these true. aliens. But yeah, <laughs> I agree. The revelation of him being the son. I had like I had this inkling. I'm like, man, but nothing solid. So when it did happen, I was still shocked. I was like, oh, but I think I was more shocked when he was trying to commit suicide when he lit himself on fire. I was like, bro, yeah, right. Ray, you got a bright future ahead of you, bro. What are you doing, man? <laughs> I was like, Ray, don't play. <laughs> he, he just, when you said that he set himself but, on fire, I was like, what the fuck? But is he does true? have a bright future, literally. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> snap. Well played, good sir. I'm well played. Attention. I mean, I don't know about bright future when like, you're going to be eaten soon. But... Yeah, he Dude, he has, fire, he has a shot fire. on Fire Force. <laughs> we don't oh, talk boy. about that. Oh, boy. Look <laughs> 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 at how this show went. Yes, he has a very good chance. But yeah, I think the, so. Overall, we had a, I'd say a really good uh, first episode. Super excited to see what happens next. And yep, I'm down. Really following this series closely. So that's gonna be oh, and forgot uh, OP was fire. I love the OP. You know me, eighty percent of OPs I find generic. I really like the OP here. So really, I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Oh, it did not yeah. hit with me. I like season one right. OP better. So yeah, bro, you guys are scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Sasha, I know how you feel. As the one person who liked the new opening for Attack on Titan. Ah, uh, touche. Touche. <laughs> oh, can I also add the ending 
of uh, Promise Neverland. I really enjoyed it. That is I like the ending. I yep. I don't remember it either. I need to watch more. I need to hear it more before I can remember. I'll have to listen to it once you guys are done talking about it. So yep, I'll have it. to listen to it again. Yes. So that's gonna be it for Promise Neverland, and then move on to our next show. So we'll move on next to um, the first big show returning this season is Free Zero, the second part two of the second season. So, um, so it it literally just like just kicked off right away, like right after the ending of part one, right with with um, like Otto and and Subaru. So I don't know. It seems like it felt like this episode was mainly like like more lore dump, and then just like. No, and then nothing really much happening. I don't know. What do you guys think? Super Whoa, winning. I I wouldn't call it just a lore dump. I think there was a lot of like progress going with this episode. Didn't you guys feel that same way as well? No, I think I, I think it was cool. I think you know we see kind of Subaru getting that reality check from Otto that he much needed from kind of what he was trying to do before with his death and rebirth attempts. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, definitely as kind of to David's point, we saw you know different lore drops both with the um, kind of dynamic between Subaru and Roswell, and kind of you know with what Subaru's learned of his kind of background and history and his kind of play into the current effects. Um, but no, I, th- I think we definitely saw a lot of good stuff and we, we, you know, learned a lot about uh, a lot of different characters yeah. in this first episode, I'd, which I think was great. I'd say mm-hmm. like the information about Amelia was like the most important. So definitely. That's why, especially since I am, um, I don't know how much they mentioned her background in like the story. I guess, I guess what I've seen before, because, um, a lot of what I know comes from the OVA, the, what are the frozen things? Like where she was, it was after, right after she, um, she got out or she was, what was it? I don't know if she was actually frozen or, or no, she was frozen, but like after she got out, she was taking care of her village that was frozen. But like, I think a lot of history, I'm pretty sure, I think I read on, I probably read it on Reddit. It was probably spoilers because I don't remember much of it happening in the actual show. So, um, from my memory, uh, I don't remember them mentioning that much in the actual show itself. They might have maybe briefly mentioned it, but it wasn't really, it was just kind of glossed over. So, I don't know if you guys remember seeing it or hearing I, it i don't much from the, from the original well, yeah. yeah i don't Emily remember like either. that was stuck or something but nothing specific at all yeah have, have you guys all watched the movie uh, the ova no. i watched yeah. the ova you did cool no no okay just i have not okay I, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of uh shows a little bit more of uh, amelia's backstory yeah but mm-hmm. but the, the time they're talking about before she got frozen they didn't really mention that much no no they, they didn't at all so and then I didn't know that like that Puck had to. He was the one that was stealing her memories, and he was basically the one that was stopping her from doing the trials. So, yeah, that was definitely interesting. And I mean, they kind of alluded to you know Subaru having that discussion with Puck when Subaru is kind of holding Amelia's hand to uh, get her to sleep and everything. So I'm kind of interested as well if they'll at some point you know talk about what Subaru and Puck talked about for Puck to break that relationship and bring back Amelia's memories. I'm sure they will. But R.I.P. Puck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's bad. I, I didn't really enjoy the episode too much just because, I don't know, I, I, I don't think I pay close enough attention to this show to like be able to keep up with all the lore or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't really understand most of what was happening for most of the episode. I don't care about any of these characters. I hate where they've been. I just don't <laughs> care about any of it. But then it got to Puck. Like me. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I want to care so bad, but I just don't care at all. And then it got to the scene with Puck, and I, I think I actually did cry a little bit, like a tear or two. That made me very sad. And then Stratton was, like, talking through the thing, and I was like, shut up. This is a good part. <laughs> Way to go. Yikes. My bad. Um, yeah. I, I, I definitely like got Otto, that. but that's it. Otto's definitely, you know, stepping to the plate and showing, like, hey, I'm here to help you out. And, you know, you need to rely on others a lot more. It's not just all on your shoulders at the end of the day, which I think is really great that they kind of continue to harp at that and see Subaru's growth from a, a human side. Um, the thing for me, kind of to your point, Taylor, that like I just kind of find myself glossing over is like all the stuff in this episode when they were talking to, uh, is it Ryuzu? One of like the clones of like that crystal girl. I know you're talking about. I don't know her name. Yeah, we'll call her Ryuzu. yeah, Ryuzu yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and they all, it's like, there's like, you know, many copies, but four of them are like four. the main yeah. like protectors or whatever. That whole part, I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, how is this? I know like we got a little bit more background into Garfield and why he's like, afraid to leave the sanctuary but Wait, that's why? close enough why, for me why is he afraid well we don't know if he's afraid but there is a specific reason as to why he doesn't want to leave the sanctuary but it has been 
uh, told yet. Okay. Well, didn't they touch a bit upon like yes. his mother and father and just he they didn't know if it's out of anger versus like sadness or something for like why he acts the way he does. But then only the um, the outcast uh, Ryuzu knows, and as of right now, mm -hmm. we don't know what that exactly is. Ah, uh, okay, right. So I think that's probably why he's so close to that specific one, and I don't think he really cares much for the other ones as much. Mm -hmm. Um, so, sorry, I just want to go back a little bit uh, to Justin's point when when he talks about how like uh where where he like where Otto was basically kind of saying like you you have to rely on others. I feel like, mm -hmm. and he also like, and Justin, I think you also mentioned too about how. Like they harp at the point at the same time, like it's getting annoying because it just feels like that that that's like a constant thing with Subaru, is like he mm -hmm. keeps forgetting this basic thing, and uh, and it, that and he's also just it's just like whining about a lot, like those things as well where it just seems like mm -hmm. dude we've been dealing with this it's like the first six episodes, and it's still like a constant thing. Taylor kind of talked me a little bit into it where basically it's like well this this guy just constantly dies like how would you feel I was like I don't know See, I'm not there at that point I kind of feel like the story is kind of unfair to Subaru because like yeah, yeah he's, that is he's... true yeah. <laughs> like he's trying his best like he's it's not like, yes. it's, not like he, it's not like he's like he's i don't know he's not being selfish anymore he's trying his best mm -hmm. but it, it just keeps like I, it's just, the show just keeps shitting on him so i feel, yeah. feel kind of bad i know you guys said that i was defending reiner super hard that one episode but that was not me defending somebody if you want to see me defend somebody it'll be subaru nice. like i swear <laughs> this poor child yeah yeah uh i mean and to be fair uh I think we have to kind of remember that Subaru is kind of the embodiment of just human nature in general. Uh, you know, he, he is just like a kid, right? A teenager. And then he's going through all of this on his own. And he just recently broke out of his shell, trying to just put everything on his shoulders. And that's what uh, Satelia wanted him to stop doing, right? To love himself more, you know, ask for help, just be more, more human in a sense. And then Otto is just kind of like reiterating that fact, which he just broke out of his shell. So maybe that's why it's getting a little bit too much to you, like kind of annoying how they're constantly yeah. repeating. But it's like back. he's also in a unique situation too, where he can't tell anyone how he feels besides Aketna. So like... Well, I mean, that doesn't really stop you from asking others for help, right? Especially if you're constantly repeating the same cycle over and over. At that point, you would try something different, you know, i.e. ask for help. He's right. Yeah. I mean, he's been trying, so, like, I don't blame him for, like, all of the loops he's gone through so far, because I feel like he's been trying everything so far. Right, yeah, right. It, it kind of makes me think of, like, what did Subaru tell Otto when Otto, at the beginning, was just like, you know, tell me everything, and they kind of just, I think in the episode, like, they sit down with each other, yeah. but then they never allude to it, so it's like, yeah. what exactly, you know, if he can't tell Otto about his return from death ability, like, you know, how do you... <laughs> That's one I mean, thing I, th I think the show actually does well, though. They, I think they do come back to those, and they cover it well as well. Yeah, yeah. so that's what I'm assuming yeah. will happen. Yeah. But again, it's just, you know, those questions in the back of your head of like, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then to be fair, like, that loophole is actually pretty easy to get over. Like, you don't really have to worry about as much. Like, yeah, I can't tell you that I'm constantly being revived. I can just tell you, hey, this is what's going to happen. I need you to do this, this, and this. Just trust Very me. Very true. Right. Very and true. if Otto is trying to be as helpful as, he, as he's trying to, like, push on a Subaru, then I'm sure he'll just listen to him and try to help out. Yeah, sure. But I mean, at the same time, it's like Otto is just, he's just this random merchant that Subaru met. Like, oh, yeah, like how many? T I don't know how long ago. So it's like, I don't know how much yeah. you can really trust someone of like this secret that you can't tell anyone else. So right. well, I, no, I, I think he's, I think he's, he'll, he's trustworthy. He's, trust he's, he he's trustworthy like now, but it's like coming from Subaru's yeah. perspective, it's like you just met the guy, like this random well, merchant I mean, yeah. that you, you, you've seen, and especially like you've seen him in loops since like the White Whale arc. So like, you don't, you, I guess I guess he lost he's lost track of how many times he like he's like met met him or or what even is their relationship to man what loop they're in. No, so you you're, you're if, things, if things go bad, he can just himself and then you know just take uh, out. You forget about the one loop where he actually uh, got Otto to confess that you know he thought of him as his best friend. So I think from that point on, that's when he trusted Otto more. I don't remember that. I guess <laughs> it's it is hard keeping. I track do of remember loops, that now that so. now that you mentioned it, that was a sweet part. I'm glad right. you mentioned that. That's so the, I remember. That's basically the the point of the the bromance that occurred between Otto and Subaru. Because I think it was Otto was able to rescue Subaru from being locked up in the uh, in that chamber or whatever in the ruins, mm -hmm. and then after that he sacrificed himself so that Subaru can live. And then I think, like I said, uh, it was either that loop or a different loop. But then he announced that, hey, you know, I've always thought of you as my best friend. You know, you can trust me. Uh, and then from that point on, that's when he started to look at Otto at a different light. 
So, uh, yeah, it's 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 it is completely different than what you guys are are thinking of. I think. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the thing that that, that kind of surprised me at the end was the fact that it seems like Otto has some kind of powers as well. Like he's able to kind of disappear and reappear. I don't know if that's just part of the mist or if that's just the animation. Oh. But <laughs> at, at the very end there, like Otto was able to put his hand on the back of Garfield. And then when Garfield looked behind him, like oh, Otto true. wasn't there. And he was actually on the like other end of the room. So Yeah, I that f- was weird. I noticed that too. Yeah. So it, it feels like more to Otto than meets the eye. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's not just some like some lower merchant who has no powers. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Okay. That part I wasn't paying attention to. So yeah. Same. <laughs> you got to man you gotta you gotta solve the mystery you gotta look at i know look I, at all these things I, you gotta mystery. analyze right. enhance zoom you know yeah, do you think you have to start start up and then i'll get invested <laughs> into the show again i'm, I'm sure. just like right. i'm just really into the lore like i'm super like entranced in the lore so i want to like i'm just thinking yeah. about a lot of things in like the back the background not not exactly necessarily what's happening right now so well you mm. can be the one to carry us then david no that's cool right now <laughs> we, is, need a, we need is, a sidebar you, you okay you and cool you is cool, carrying hard right now I don't Just give a more... fuck about the Lord. What I want oh, is them to the like, right? That's what I want. I care more. How do we get there? I care more about the Lord than the characters. <laughs> so, so far from Rem, it's like we need to get back there. Yeah, we need to get back and, to uh, the Lord. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I care more about the Lords and the characters at this point. So, so. Justin, what is what is your thoughts on? On ReZero, is it hype for you or just meh? Oh, it's 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 definitely hype. Okay, like, all right. So you three can carry. It, yeah, I I'm definitely very interested in Amelia's background even more now that we kind of got that you know little nugget of how she was frozen in the forest with her you know like um, temporary family or whatever that she was with, and then we saw what the one like small image of like her mother or what you know is believed to be yeah. her her yeah. mother there, but. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm just interested more of like, I assume, or I, I think that like Amelia was the one that caused everybody being frozen, but for whatever reason does not remember it. Because yeah. it, it almost seemed like his mom or the Amelia's mom figure was trying to say like, oh, you know, I'm sorry or whatever. Like, it's not your fault. So it's just kind of seemed like a cover up tactic to like, you know, pull away blame from Amelia. Yeah, I can say as that. As a child. I'm sorry, Justin. Did you did you say that uh, that you you saw the movie or no? No, I didn't. Okay, you should watch the. the it's a lot of a, a kind of like Amelia backstory. Okay, definitely do that. Um, and then just one final thing about ReZero. It's like the way that they that this episode started. Like you can definitely tell that they meant for a full two seasons. And That's what Taylor said, like, yep. <laughs> I wish at this point, I wish they were. I know it was already delayed from because it's supposed to air in spring because of covid but now i wish it was just like delayed the first part to fall and just continue straight like i guess they had like like advertising or some other like contracts like broadcasting contracts whatever but just from like Hmm. just from like an airing perspective it was not a good thing to like display like this so yeah totally agree for sure especially with a confusing show like this yeah Mm yeah so that's uh, that's the last thing i'll have for rezero so so good. good start. So hopefully, see, excited to see what's uh, more to happen. Um, we're we next to Higurashi. Cause oh man! After New Year's break, we got straight back into going right back in the show. And I like how the first like t- five minutes of this episode is basically everything that happened that like who thought like that answers baby <laughs> answers <laughs> baby that's what i'm talking about, about. It anymore that was like i don't know I, even though it was a serious moment i was just laughing because like oh my god this is exactly what like, Ku was like saying yeah, <laughs> besides right. okay, besides the one thing is like i still think uh, you kept saying that satoko was like part of it i think i'm assuming that her house is like super far away and that's why she came in so late and i just i don't uh, i don't know. I don't, the, have any, the thing that, I don't have any ever evidence that shows that she was part of it, so I can't really buy that part yet. Right. The thing that the thing that that made me second guess my opinion on how like she was in on it or not was the way that she came back. She was very distraught. She was stressed out, and she, uh, it didn't seem like she was trying to cover anything up. But I just thought it was really weird, uh, like how she came back, like her her attitude was. So like, why even come back at all? You're not rushing to them. You're not like you didn't clean off the blood off your uh, like your dress or your face or whatever. So uh, it kind of leads more to what you guys are saying. She was just a little girl. She was scared. She didn't know what to do, and she just went back to the festival. But f- for what reason we don't know. It's not very clear. Just in but, shock. 
Right. So uh, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. It, I'm leaning towards me being wrong with that guess or hypothesis. I I'm made just last saying week. it like we don't have much yeah. evidence, but. Right. But, but man, the first 10 minutes, oh though. My God. Oh, my God. I didn't expect it to go was... in that direction. Jeez. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was talking to Taylor about earlier, too. And um, I'm guessing this is the beginning of the answer arc or the answer portion, okay. I guess. I I thought I don't know, I just assume it's gonna be Rika's art because it like the whole focus was on Rika. Well, I mean, and that's exactly what because I, I had said yeah. I think this is the answer art. Who what... was like, oh, I thought this was Rika, and I was like, I think they're basically the same thing. Okay, yeah. so the same. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I didn't. I, I guess okay. A lot of this episode it was from the old the old series killer, so we have to like, I guess educate us and then a lot of things like how because a lot of what they said this episode was like like i have no idea who, oh. who hanyu is and i didn't realize she well, was doing this loop for 100 years yeah i thought about what i was gonna tell you guys for some backstory of what i know with this stuff but i i mean i've read a lot online about how this is supposed to be kind of a standalone and new viewers should be able that. to watch it no i have seriously he said that this so i I'm, I'm thinking maybe that got thrown out there and they're going to explain a little bit of it more so yeah. i i can okay. give you a little bit of background if you want it or um, i mean i guess i can wait then i, I would yeah, I'll, maybe I'll hold wait. off well, for I, an episode or two before i wait till like yeah. later towards the end when like if things don't get explained then then i'll we'll, we'll just start okay. asking okay yeah because i know I, I i suppose this was actually probably a lot but um trying to think of if there's anything that i want to share right away and i i don't i don't think there is okay that's fine hmm. so um i don't know i'm all right but i'm already more excited for like this arc than than satoko's because it seems like we're finally getting to like the lore and like just trying to solve the mystery well i wouldn't write off an arc as something that we can just kind of forget because i'm sure there's probably a lot to it that we don't know the significance of right but i mean my cousin was just like we didn't know much about like the curse because the curse got oishi and like we didn't know what caused it or mm. anything anything more about it seems it seems like from like reina's and like and um like neon's arc like it seems we we get a little more detail about like the curse or about mm. i guess well i guess like like Satsuko had more of the history of like the whole Joes, but it didn't really seem that important so i guess we'll see the one thing I tell you guys is that um, you have to look at this as like two different things. Two things are happening consecutively at the same time in this town. There's mm. stuff like cursed stuff, and there's like um, Rika's stuff that she that her her time looping and things like that. They're like mm. two separate things that are unfortunately happening to this group of people. I think that's the only thing I want to tell you about right now as you're trying to determine like what's important or what's true or what you want to bring forward. Just keep those two things in mind. Mm -hmm. Cause well, uh, it made me feel as though Rika is actually the main character of the series. Same. Right. Because yeah. she, she's a person that's been going through this loop for a hundred years. Uh, she even mentioned that no matter how hard she tried to escape, because apparently she made it to the city and eventually she just woke up back in the village one day. Um, yeah. She says she's going to give it five more attempts or five more loops. And apparently, according to Uishi, uh, she is the cause or she's the one that's like, like giving out these curses or whatever. So uh -huh. at that point, it just makes me feel like, you know, Rika's actually the MC of the story. And it's up to her to kind of either finish the loop by by suicide and and. And also with that being said, it'll get rid of that curse and the village can live on happily ever after. Or, you know, it's just fate cannot be defied and it's going to happen until fate is satisfied or done with Rika. So that's what my takeaway from this episode I was. I have a hard time like believing like Oishi just like, just just when he's under a curse like that, like I don't, I assume he's like he's delusional. So I can't, I can't always like take what he says seriously. Mm. Um, but then like you know in other like in a lot of like these like time loop shows like like usually the sometimes the most important character isn't the main character it's like the person who's always like looping and then the main character is the one that finds the person that loops so i can but see to why they call the main character david well, <laughs> it's the main character because it's the it's the focus of the show even though it's not the most important person mm. Mm. So, uh, i feel, I feel okay. like this one of those shows where it's like like yeah rika sounds like the most important person but they I guess they just want to focus on Keiichi. I guess he'll be the one that solves it or something. 
Um, Igarashi is like an ensemble cast type of show. There's a couple of like major players, but it, I've always thought of it more as an ensemble show. Okay. I mean, but like since you, if you were playing the game, you'd play as Keiichi. So I mean, you could think of him as think of him. At least I would assume so. I've never played the game, but like, uh, mm, okay. But like, you would play as him, so you're seeing everything through his eyes. So he's kind of the main character that way. But it's not like he is the only one who has very crucial control over certain factors. Um, yeah. And as for Rika, like. From what I know of the show, I wasn't really aware. I, I might be missing something. I wasn't really aware that she like left and did all this stuff and then got dragged back. So that was pretty sad for me. And I'm pretty sure that even if she were to kill herself, I'm pretty sure that this village is still going to be dealing with some problems. I think well, that the village re is relying on her. But then the shard or the sword is supposed to be able to end the life of a looper. So I mm -hmm. think that would be the the key point here i mean i don't mm -hmm. think i don't think they're gonna do that because that's an easy way out that's or it's, yeah. it's like it's like a bad end in like one of those visual novels so i don't see it yeah, in the show i mean mm -hmm. it is japan so it wouldn't surprise me if they did go that route uh i see that as a bad end i don't see it for like for what's supposed to be like the canon ending like i don't see them doing that mm -hmm. the the oh. bad end is going like what he intended hmm hmm so, yeah I don't, I don't know but this was a really good. I mean, I like I enjoyed this episode because it felt a little bit more. Well, so happy to be done with Satoko, and uh, <laughs> oh, and like shit. I don't know, first ten like first five or ten minutes, a little backstory. But like Ku had messaged me earlier in the week. I think the day it came out, and he was like, "Yo, yes. have you seen Higurashi yet?" Like, no, I, said, I need answers. <laughs> like, have you seen it? Oh god. I said, no, I haven't watched it yet. And then I finally got around to it on Friday and broke my own rules and sat down to watch it with food in front of me a whole mm. feast mm -hmm. and um yeah there was like just the massacre right in the beginning and for whatever reason that it actually bothered me more than some other stuff in higurashi has before it wasn't creepy at all but it just felt really hor horrific like i can't remember it was because it was like super, like it's much more explicit than like the show has been so far yeah. it was a lot more it was a lot more explicit and I really care about the characters and like, mm. I don't know, there was something about like at one point in the episode, Rika, this is later on, uh, but like Rika asks, um, uh, what's the green hair girl's name? Not Shion, but the other one. Mion? Mion, yeah, Mion. She asked Mion, she's like, oh, you know, is Shion going to be here? And she said no. And she was like, "That that's okay. You don't have to call her. And obviously her intention at, at that time had been to kill herself. And so it was kind of sad to see like, that sh that you know that disappointment of her knowing she was never going to see Shion again, and then like mm. coupled with like that massacre at the beginning, that just felt pretty visceral. Like it just was kind of an emotional episode for me more than really the rest of it had been. I feel like they just nailed those moments, and I'm happy they included it. Although I kind of wish his <laughs> weapon of choice would have been uh, an actual pistol and not a revolver, because I've noticed that he shot more than six times from the same gun. Yes, so many bullets. Without yeah. reloading. Yeah, he had a lot of bullets. <laughs> I did not notice that. <laughs> so Oishi, the master detective, is able to shoot more than six bullets with a revolver. Master Markson over here, just reloading like a madman. Yeah, because in my head, I'm just like, okay, they're going to rush the guy, right? He he clearly has a revolver. After six shots, they're just going to go up, gang up on, on the guy. Actually, what threw me off was was um was uh Mion like she had like the she had like, the, the toy gun and like in that satchel or whatever I thought that was a real one uh -huh. I was like why didn't you why do you not bring that out and use it I was like wait it's probably a toy not like an yeah, actual it's, real it's just, gun it's just so that that threw me off <laughs> yeah sadly oh man but when Shion died ooh, I was just so sad sad too <laughs> so sad yeah um, well. But yeah, no, I, I thought it was a pretty damn good episode. Uh, answers a lot of things, but now it gives you more questions. Yeah. And now we have to wait and see what the remaining five loops are going to be. And uh, apparently it's not just a one one episode arc. It's There's going to be a part two of this arc as well. So uh, I guess there's still oh, going to be I wasn't expecting to be one episode. I was expecting to be like, be... I don't know. I, I was expecting to be. I don't know. If it is Rika's arc, but I'm just expecting to be a full arc, at least four or five episodes. Well, she did say she's going to give a five more loop. So I saw. I thought that when she mentioned that, she was going to reset the world somehow, and then you start with loop one. Either that, oh. or this is this is this is going to be the start of loop one. Yeah. Of, of five attempts. Maybe so. we'll see. So that's why I was a little confused, but it's. Uh, I mean, it'll be fine. If if this is truly the answer arc or Rika's arc, it'll give us more to work with. And I'm okay with that too. So, yeah, 
Uh, huh. Last thing I want to say is um, that Rika's like mature voice finally makes sense when she says that she's been looping for a hundred years, and I, I guess like she already left the village. I assuming she was either a teenager or adult when she left the village and had to come back or or got transported back. So, so that all finally oh, makes okay. sense, and we're starting to see her throw away the facade of like that little kid that that doesn't know anything, even though she still has to pretend for everyone. But mm, yeah, that's all. Yeah, I had for. This is Hirashi, so okay. Yeah, is, is is Hanya like the her her friend, spirit friend, whatever, was she in the original show as well? Or is this like a completely new character? No, she was in the original. Oh okay. She's part of the she's part of Higurashi lore. She's like because gotcha. they call it the, the cotton thing that they they the cotton um, drifting festival. Yeah, they, they, that's the Hanyu the cotton is the Hanyu, isn't it? Is that oh, what I call I, it? I, I have no idea. Okay. That, I don't know either. I'll have to check that out later. So that's fine. Yep. So that's gonna be it for Higurashi. And then we have a um, bunch of other shows. I guess um I guess we can start with B Stars if you guys want to talk about B Stars. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so dude, I feel so bad for Legoshi, bro. Like he did I don't know if you guys Taylor, did you watch season one? Yes? No? Yes, I watched it. Oh, okay, sorry, you cut out. Um, yeah. but yeah, so like like Goshi does all this for, for for horror, right? Like for for the girl that he loves, they and like they, they go back to school, they just continue their, their school life, and apparently they they're they're still not dating, even though Legoshi thought that they were an item. And uh Haru is kind of ashamed to be seen around with Legoshi because he's kind of a carnivore, and it's just a really odd couple, right? A bunny and a wolf. So Apparently, they've been kind of just having their own secret interactions, and it feels like Haru still has a a thing or a crush for uh, Louis, who supposedly disappeared after all that, too. And I don't remember exactly what happened to him at the end of uh, season one, but he kind of just nonchalantly comes back to school and quits. So um, I guess he's going to have his own backstory as well as to what was going on. Uh, but yeah, Legoshi is just getting shitted on so hard in episode one. I feel kind of bad for the guy. Um, but uh, it, I thought it was a pretty good opening, uh, a, a good way to op- open up this the season. But uh, what did you think, Taylor? I get what you're talking about, where it feels like it 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 feels kind of bad that they're like not together. But I also think that I mean that's I, I feel that that is end goal territory. But I do feel like they have things they need to work out. I mean, their relationship is complicated, and mm-hmm. she might have some feelings for Lewis because it's hard to just delete feelings and he's been missing so i'm sure she's worried about him um but i don't think that that means that she would like pick him over lagosi and i think that she does still like lagosi more um just by the fact that she's willing to meet with him in private like she's been doing and and all of that stuff so uh, so it doesn't really bother me quite so much i just i figured it wasn't i didn't think it was going to start off this season with them together together because it sounded at the end of last season like oh we got our our stuff to work out so i wasn't surprised by that um but the knowledge is just out of pity and that's like even worse i feel rather than you just think she, being... you think she's with legosi out of pity i feel like that would be the case here at this point why I mean, even even Lagosi kind of feels that way too, right? It's oh, I guess, I guess on his word, he never like officially declared that he wanted to be her boyfriend or whatever. Uh, he just said he wanted to be stronger or, or or change and be a better person. But I don't know. I feel like at this point, if if you're hiding a guy, like you don't have to claim that you're a couple. Just be okay and willing to be out in the open together, right? So that. Mm-hmm. Even she mentioned herself, even if they were to start off small rumors about them, like, mm-hmm. like who cares, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I care for you as a person. I have nothing to be ashamed of, especially for all that you've done for me. Like, mm-hmm. I shouldn't be ashamed of this. But the way that she's acting and how she said it, said things to Lugosi, I feel as though she's kind of just hanging around with him more in the open or like in like having these meetings. Like it's, it's out of pity. So that's why I feel so bad for the guy. That's just I think there's something something going on that we're not sure of something that's going on like in her her life or her social life or whatever, because I mean, at the end of last season, it seemed like she definitely reciprocated his feelings. I mean, she did she chase after him up that stairwell or did she run away upset after she saw him on stage with that other female wolf and then he ran after her? Do you remember? Uh, 
I think she kind of ran away and then just got kidnapped, right? Or captured? No, I'm talking about after all of that, after all of that stuff. Because I think that she, I think she saw them together and then she was really upset and she ran off and then he chased after her. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And she, she did that because she wants to be with him, but it's just such a complicated situation Hmm. logistically and socially that I think that it, she's just going about it slow. I don't think she's hanging out with him just out of pity. That's not what I got. I think that there, what I read from that conversation, it seemed to me like there was maybe some stuff that she might be experiencing or that she might be worried that he might experience if they were to go fully public, especially if you're considering characters like that female wolf who might be like the next B star, she could really Mm, like cause them some problems. So I, I think that she's just being slow and he's just a hormonal teenager who just wants to have a, you know, like, Let's seal this deal. But she's just like, let's just cool our jets a bit. That's that's where I'm taking it from. I mean, he's shown a lot of restraint so far from what I've been seeing. So I don't think that's an issue with him. I didn't mean just in that way, Ku. I meant emotionally as well. Okay. Oh, right, <laughs> emotionally, right. like. Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose. And then uh, with Lewis, I think at the end of last season, I don't think that we know exactly what he went to do. The last I recall is that the mayor had come up to him and said, and basically like given him like the real lowdown of what's actually happening in this society of, and how people are supposed to interact and, you know, why he basically shouldn't go after the girl, Mm. Haru. And I remember Lewis going through a really tough, like, mental debate over that. And I don't remember seeing him afterwards. So, and then I remember there was, like, all of those scenes where you learn about, like, when he was, a, you know, a, a kid um, mm. and what had happened to him. And I think that's the last that we saw. And he's probably exploring that a little bit. Right. And, and it seems to me like he might be trying to pursue politics a little bit more. And maybe that's why he's acting this way. Because he feels like that's the way he can change society. Did you get that feeling? Uh, yeah, that's what I was feeling as well. He okay. just kind of stepped out of the the limelight in a school setting and is trying mm-hmm. to focus more on like the real world politics mm-hmm. and how to contribute or make changes out there. Mm-hmm. So that's what um, I remember of Lewis. Um, and then like as for the rest of the episode, it was really fun seeing all the characters again. I didn't really realize how attached I'd gotten to them until I saw them again. <laughs> Um, the mm-hmm. humor I thought was really cute. All the stuff with like the haunting that was going on was adorable. Um, it was just, it was, it was a, it was a fun episode and I just wish they could have covered some of those points from the last season. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it kind of left off at a weird point and how they yeah. started up this episode, uh, mm-hmm. kind of left you wondering what happened between that time frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess we'll see what happens next episode or if they even bring it up at all. So. Oh, and that tiger, the one that's in the drama club, he's not bad, is he? I know he got, he's like, um, he likes no, to pick fights, but. Yeah, he's not necessarily bad, but okay. he's willing to do whatever it takes to be like the lead star or whatever. So he's okay. done some bad things, but he's not necessarily a bad character. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for Beastars for this week. All right. Um, and then we'll move on to our next show. I guess we'll head over next to um, Kimo Jihen. Um, just want to, you guys want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I can start things off. Um, I think it was an interesting first episode with, with you know, the things that we saw and kind of the introduction to the story. Um, mm-hmm. I guess taking this step back, you know, it is kind of one of those trope esque shows of demons and yokai and kind of this um, focus or element of exorcism. Um, but I think the way that they introduced, you know, the setting and the characters that we see, uh, in Kimono Jihen, uh, was really well done. And for me, the thing that really kind of first drew me into the show, since this is one of, you know, the newer original shows for this season, uh, was just the fact that the main character has Tanjiro's eye style. I literally thought it was just like a variant version of Tanjiro. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, more Demon Slayer-esque looking characters, I'm in. So. Um, I'm really excited for for the characters that I think we're going to learn about. And I think if the characters end up being flat, then that's something that may turn a lot of people away or from the, the success of the show. Um, I don't know, Taylor, do you have any thoughts about this first episode? Uh, I, to- I totally agree with you about the characters falling flat kind of thing. Um, it, I, like, I'm one of those people that like uh, yokai shows supernatural shows like i am the intended audience for those types of things i'll watch them all and i'll never get bored because i that's just what i like but i do i agree with you that this one could be possibly kind of tropey and from what i've seen of the characters so far other than the detective that shows up in this episode 
they're mm-hmm. kind of flat. I mean, they're pretty stereotypical. There's nothing special. I mean, it's episode one. It's just set up, so it's nothing I would find too concerning yet, personally. Ex- um, no, I, I agree. I think it's one of those things where it has the potential to be uh, a gem in the rough, so to speak. Um, but we just need, you know, more characters and more introductions. I think this first episode uh, definitely gave us an introduction to, um, you know, the main character and kind of his revelation of being, you know, this half demon, half human individual. Uh, but we really won't get into it until we kind of see the Tokyo crew, so to speak, and all these kind of bands of characters that they're going to come down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this show like, is it, is there action or is it setting up an action show or is it more about the lore um, or the world? There, there, there was action. action. Yeah, but it wasn't that nice looking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely opinion. it's a show where I'd say like the animation and the art style isn't gonna like blow you away or anything. It's kind of just run of the mill average. Mm-hmm. I think again, it's really gonna be the characters they're gonna sell it. Um, just looking at like a lot of mm-hmm. different promotional images and stuff, it looks like there's a lot of unique potential characters that have either different type of exercising or yokai esque abilities that we'll learn mm-hmm. about me that it might be willing to get a little bit gritty too i mean this first episode was, was kind of like that like some of some like i mean you see the flashback of when uh the main character forgot his name already sorry i'm terrible with names but uh, you know they talk about how his like uh brother had accidentally killed him when they were younger <laughs> and oh, yeah. the, the brother uh didn't know that he was that there was something off with him until he saw him bleeding something white instead of red and mm-hmm. he ran away it, or like just like the fight scene, like the way that the um, the yokai characters are illustrated, how they're drawn, their design, just it seems like it's going to be a little bit edgier. Even the fact that like the mom who'd taken the main character in and had still raised him, I think, for most of his life, she <laughs> had hired the detective to kill him because she thought he was the one that was killing these monsters or sorry, killing the animals around the area, <laughs> which I mean, that's pretty fucked up. So uh, I, I'm hoping that it will be a little bit on the darker edge stay on the darker edge of things but we'll see um i feel like it's gonna be a mixture and hopefully they they mix the comedy with the uh like the darker side of the the, the show fairly well um, be comedy i guess it would be because at towards the end um uh, they had the two uh other tokyo crew members come in and they're mm-hmm. kind of just like joking around kind of lightening up the mood mm-hmm. uh and it was kind of comedic at uh like when he revealed, when the detective revealed that he was the also tail. a, yeah, <laughs> the uh, fox or the tanuki or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like they're trying to throw in some comedy with this as well. That's true. So it won't be as dark or sinister as we think it'd be. But mm-hmm. I, uh, from what I've seen so far, it, it seems to be doing okay. Uh, I think at this point, it just depends on the way to take the characters and if the personality pearls through or not. Because uh, like you guys mentioned, it's nothing like, extraordinary or mind blowing. Um, but I think it's at a good standard to where you would enjoy it if you like these kind of shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested as well to see how Kabane, the main character, kind of his abilities develop. Uh, I see it's, you know, also tagged as a shonen. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping it doesn't go down that trope side where his ability as, you know, this half demon, half human just become oh, yeah. like super OP and he can, you know, overcome any sort of obstacle. So I really am hoping that with these newer Tokyo crew members that we saw at the end of the episode, we really do have that kind of balance and leaning on one another for these different abilities so they can shine in their own right at the end totally of the day. Totally agree. Totally right. agree. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really, I don't have, yeah, I don't have anything to add for that one for this show. Yeah, that's all I got too. So we'll see how it develops, but yeah. All right. Um, so that's going to be it for um, Kimo and Jihan. Uh, we're going next to um, Hori Mia. We start. Uh, um, so I mean, I I overall I enjoyed this first episode. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It feels like, like like not a, it doesn't feel like a comedy or a drama, but somewhere like in between. It felt more serious, but not like not like anything bad was gonna happen. I don't know. Like, but I I did enjoy the first episode. I like the atmosphere of the two characters. So I'm interested to see how this shows this show goes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do enjoy the chemistry between the the heroine and the hero of the story. Um, I don't know; it just seems like a regular romance uh, anime to me. It doesn't. There's nothing that really stands out. Uh, but mm-hmm. I, I I haven't enjoyed it so far, just because, like I said, of, of the chemistry. So um, yeah, I think for me, it's definitely the favorite like new show that I watched from this last oh, week. Really? Okay. Um, 
I, I mean, in the regard that I, I agree with Ku's point of, you know, it does feel very, you know, rom-com trope-esque, but I don't think we've seen enough of the variety of characters apart from Hori and Mia, so I'm interested to see the kind of how that develops, but I, I think the comedy was, was really well done. I find myself, you know, laughing at a, a lot of kind of the interactions that they were having after school with each other, um, and then especially when... Um, the other male classmate of Mia was kind of, you know, confessing that he likes Hori and he was kind of, he was saying like, oh, you know, me and her aren't like that. So you should go for it. And then when he got rejected, then Hori was kind of saying like, well, well, do you like him then and not me? So that was kind of just a funny, you know, uh-huh. kind of focus between them. But I don't know. Yeah, I, like I mean, it- this anime is like, I, wa- I feel like I watched an entire season in one episode. Like, <laughs> I because like, Basically, I'm so used to, from the very few rom- romance ones that I've seen, it feels like you go a whole season or two or however much there is with them like dodging around each other. And then there might be something akin to a confession at the end. <laughs> like it's just so much struggle to yeah. even like get anywhere near that point. And then in this one, they didn't outright confess to each other or anything, but I feel like they are both like, Hey, you like me, right? Yeah, I, I, I like you too. I feel like they were definitely at the point at that point. We already had the rival love interest come in and get shot down and be cool with it by the end of this episode. Um, what else? Ah, like we, I see. We've... You, you might be mistaken it though, because I think she was referring to the fact that did you think I only allowed you to be around me out of pity and not like as an actual friend? I don't think it's due to love interest, but I think she was, a, she was mad at the fact that he thought that they weren't like actual friends or that she actually hated the guy. And he just, uh, she let him be around him out of pity. So I don't think it's been clear cut as like them confessing their love to each other, even though you as an audience feel that they are attracted to each other. That could be true. That could be true. I mean, yeah. even, even if that was true, it still just feels like more things happened in this episode than normally happen in most romance stuff that I've seen. Oh, yeah. For yeah, like it definitely escalated season. super quick. Yeah. yeah. I, like, we already had a montage scene in the first episode. <laughs> like, when does that ever happen? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, right. There was, wasn't there? <laughs> yes. So I was just so confused the whole time. Like, what? wait, what's the point? Is the point of this really just that he has piercings and we're just going <laughs> to... And, and tattoos. Like, and tattoos, I was and gonna say, can't forget those tattoos. tattoos. <laughs> Which is fine. I'm behind that. I love the guy. Like he looks well, great it's, it's 100% fan, in. <laughs> uh yeah, I, I suppose. Like but... a lot of people in Japan freak out over a high school kid having piercing tattoos. So, so I can get I can um, get that. I, I definitely love the aloofness of Mia as a character where, you know, mm. like you're saying with the tattoos, the piercing, it's all kind of things that he was yeah. saying he just did as a, a spur of the moment type of thing. Um, and then even the scene, you know, when uh, Hori has to go to the student council meeting. So Mia has to go and get the eggs from the supermarket in her mm-hmm. place. So, yeah, I, don't, I, so I, I think if the comedy's done really well, then I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, I definitely like Mia. Like I I guess I was I was dreading that he was gonna be like those like those asshole like cold hearted type of characters, and it's like the reverse. So I'm really glad I like his character a lot. So. Yeah, I agree with you, David. I was scared that he was going to be like that too, so I was pleasantly surprised. Because that, that's the way all the summaries like make it sound like he's just like this mm-hmm. like like mysterious guy that no one knows about. Ooh, what does he do after school? So yeah. true. Yeah, true. I'm not really quite sure what the point of the show is yet, but I like the characters. Like I, I, I'm excited for it's, it. It's like the what? It's like what you show to your friends or at your like your school or work. It's not like not the same as your personal life. It's kind of those kind of stories, especially it, in in I, Japan where it. It's more like how you show yourself to people is more important. So, mm-hmm. it confuses me, especially with like H- Hori, because she's basically still the same person. Like, she looks the same. I mean, they try to make it sound like she looks different because she puts her hair up. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But she looks the same. She acts the same. She just has like responsibilities like everybody else that she does at home. There's literally nothing about her that's different. But they're like, I feel like they're just trying to like push these super generic, like tiny things. Hey, like, if Superman hair. has shown me Our anything. Everybody. Yeah, if Superman has shown me anything, is that glasses goes a long way. Okay. Wear glasses though. <laughs> I mean, I just, I she's know. wearing the same clothes that she put her hair up. It's so weird. I, I but I'm nitpicking. Like I said, I'm excited. I want. I like both the characters. So as long as the romance and the comedy are done well, I don't really care. Yeah, I think it's like right. this is the part of the romance show that I'll probably like like the most this season. Like, mm-hmm. or get attached yeah. to. 
this is going to be my Tony Kawa for the for the season, <laughs> basically. Okay, well, hopefully nothing bad happens then, or that doesn't like. You shut change. your mouth, David. <laughs> <laughs> you shut your mouth. Yeah. I don't think anything. Uh, we'll see. What I don't know what kind of show this will be. So, I'm actually I mean, I'm, I'm actually like, curious about the yeah. other cast of characters too, because they show a lot in like the covers and the LP. So I wonder if we mm-hmm. get more of the friends. I actually like it when. Like romance shows show more of like the cast, so it's not just about mm-hmm. the two main characters all the time. Me too. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. But then I uh like I said, it's just gonna be your regular romance. I, I don't think there's gonna be anything too crazy going on. It's gonna be a slice of life. I think it's just know, high school enjoyable. romance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think as of right now, they've established that they do definitely care for each other as friends. Mm-hmm. And then the other supporting cast is gonna like push them towards being more of a romantic uh partner rather than just friends. Yeah, I'm gonna trust the manga readers if we keep like praising this 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 show and, mm-hmm. or manga i'm gonna trust that it's actually gonna be good the whole way so uh, so, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm, it's... we're counting on you manga readers we're Don't... watching this based <laughs> hey, off of how we, hype we, you are we've been it. let down plenty of times so i'm just I'm throwing out a warning <laughs> yeah we yeah. only got 13 episodes too to work with so i can see it getting second season if it's popular enough because i don't think yeah be right that much demanding to make for even though i'm surprised clover works is making this like it's works um, is busy this season yeah you gotta make that money mm-hmm. putting their um, uh their sword art and their uh fate money to good use <laughs> yeah but i mean as of right now i don't see anything wrong with the show that will like put me off so yeah uh, i have had pretty good hopes that this would be really good yep. same same all right same. i think yeah, so that's that's I guess we all have the same opinions basically on Hori Hori Mia. So I'm glad I gave this show a shot. That's it for that show. Um I guess we can move on to um Mushoku Tensei. Oh man, so this show, I can see why uh it's got a lot of hype around it uh to the Isekai. Are you actually fans. excited? Actually, uh I enjoy it for for Isekai standards. It, it's 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 uh, a it's it's above average for sure. Um the only thing that I thought was funny, which I'm not really complaining about, is the fact that they made all the characters like so like sex hungry in a sense. <laughs> there was even a scene uh, in the beginning where okay, well the thing is when I, what I watched was a, a two part episode or two two episode special preview that was uh, fan sub I believe. Oh, I, so you saw I, the second think, episode already? Yeah, so I saw the second episode already. Uh, so I might be okay. getting things mixed up. So uh, I'll just let you guys talk about it. But I think this the first episode, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So you guys can talk about it, but like my opinion of the show is, I think it, it has a lot of potential. I think it's pretty good so far, um, but I just think it's weird how they're making all the characters like so like perverted or sex hungry. Yeah, yeah, I mean you you haven't had the scene where he put you know the panties on his head or whatever when they're in the kitchen or whatever when he's a kid. So it definitely has that focus. As I mean, said. That, yeah. that's, see, see, that's one. That's, okay, so like because this show is supposed to be the Godfather Isekais, how it started off, like especially the reincarnation Isekais. And, like, they've always been etchy, like, because it's always, like, these, it's either teenagers or, like, these 30-year-old men that, like, that never, that, that never had any success with romance, so they're just doing all their, their fan get to act out all their fantasies, so I'm not surprised that's etchy, because that's one of the complaints about isekais. Yeah, but most isekais don't go that far, you know? Like, they show I, the scenes of them, like, jerking off, showing him watching hentai or porn showing like there's him plenty listening of, there's to his... plenty of uh etchy at least the web novels so the web novels are really etchy so okay well anime wise right like you got uh like like i said like even in the beginning like he was creeping out the maid because he he gave the maid yep. a smile after he put the panties on yep. like on his head so like even she could tell that this guy was very perverse you know um so again i don't feel like they needed to go that far but it, it is a lot more perverse than most other isekai enemies i've seen Mm-hmm. so besides that um i just want to i just want to say it's, it's kind of funny how like this show like the way that he narrates or the, the way that they narrate try to narrate the first episode it acts like you've never seen an isekai before which makes sense mm-hmm. because it is the godfather so like it right it pretty much like yeah it did it started a lot of the tropes so he, that's why he's explaining a lot of tropes but like mm-hmm. like but we're at the point where it's like like this is also obvious but you, they just think that you've never seen isekai before so Mm. But overall, um, I actually I enjoy this show. Actually, there's something about the pacing. Like even though like like it's just still him as a kid, and we don't get that far. Like it feels like the pacing's good. Like I'm excited to see more of the lore and just I want actually I want the thing about Isekai is like I always want them to go on an adventure. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. like it's if that's the pace they're going, like we'll see more 
it'll be a more of an adventure feel. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think the biggest thing for me is just the animation is really well done, and I think that's the thing that I'm really looking forward to. So as I heard, I heard too that um apparently there's like a lot of, a lot of uh, veterans starting a new studio, and this is like the first the first anime they did. So. Okay. Hmm. Oh, hey, oh, they're doing yeah. something right. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like we have summoned our special friend, Brian. Welcome, Brian. Hey, Brian, did you, Hello. Did you Brian. watch Mushoku Tensei for your boy, I, Tizzle? I did. What did you think about it? Oh, what? Um, I would like to say the, the explanation at the very beginning is very good on like the basis of how their magic works. I think that's very well done. The animation is very good. Mm. But I can already see this going in a very etchy way. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, I, like <laughs> holy god! But what's the problem? Man? Like, no, no, no. I, it's, it's not a problem, but it's going to turn it away from being mainstream, right? It's going to only get to a certain crowd of of uh, anime. Yeah, it, like at a certain point, it's just going to attract like a like a lot of like very degenerative like <laughs> people that just only enjoy that part of the show, and it's like right. that's very yeah. off putting because like I feel like this show is has a very good like start like it's very good like as a person that never like read it or whatever first jumping into this straight away i already almost like this more than sword art so <laughs> i mean <laughs> that's, a very low bar. That's, not, that's a very low bar like, so <laughs> i mean whoa, 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 whoa. sora in its prime like i'd say it's getting pretty far up there i'll give it a few more episodes see how it turns out and then we'll Season one sword art, yeah. sort of like that. I mean, yeah, we'll have to see what it does for the pacing. So, but I think overall, episode one is really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just I, I tell I you, know, man, I could, I could do without like the parents having just banging okay. each other right besides that. <laughs> yes, besides <laughs> yeah, that, that was it folks on it like three times. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm missing some. Like I should have watched this show. Stratton, you would probably <laughs> enjoy this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know it came out though until it was too late. Right. Today. No, I'll I'll be caught up next yeah. for you guys. Yeah, there we go. So, but but, but if I were to have an issue with this show, it's just that. Like, if they were to just get rid of that, like they don't need like that perverse humor, and they would draw so much more attention to themselves in a in a positive light rather than a negative light. Like, and that's absolutely that's in a lot of isekais, and this is why this is like the god. This is why it's in here because this this started a lot of it. So I mean, I guess, but like it adds nothing to the story because the guy and... was like he, he was he, the guy the original op. Or just writing just whatever he didn't he didn't think it'd be popular so he's basically right writing. right mm -hmm. but it's but it's the anime adaption now they could have easily cut that out and the show would still be as good i you guess know? i mean the, so that's, but then that's you have my, people my complain that like you're me, you're like mess, you're not being faithful to the original so yeah there's always those people i mean Attack you're not Titan. wrong but i also <laughs> heard like from andy tizzle whatever you want to call him i heard that this could go like two ways like mm -hmm. they censor it pretty hard, or they just throw it in raw, and that raw shit is very <laughs> edgy, apparently. Yeah. So that shit, apparently, shit can get crazy oh, edgy, boy. but hopefully they don't do that because, like I said, the very like just the explanation of how like their magic works and how everything like flows, it's very mm -hmm. well done. And like, right. dude, just Truck Coon just coming in hard, man. I oh, mean, that's, God, that's where Truck Coon comes from. It's this show. He started the Truck Coon trope. Like, dude. Everything was just so well done. Like in the beginning, this the MC sounded like a total fucking dickhead, but we'll see where he goes. <laughs> and, and for some reason, that the opening, the first part where he was in modern times, for some reason that animation was really good. Like for just getting run over yeah. after getting run over a truck, and then and then like, I guess it got like tamer towards like the Isekai world. But for some reason, like like the real like the real world was super well animated. I don't understand that, but okay. You just gotta make the real world look real good. But, but also, mm -hmm. um, the the whole like being a being special and like that you can cast magic without, without, without like saying it or like mm -hmm. being a child prodigy. That's also this guy. This is what started as well, and all the other isekais. Yeah, no, I yeah. mean, I'll, I'll definitely take it. And like I said, everything is done really well so far. So, mm -hmm. and it's a high standards. It's 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 way up there. I can see why this is what started it all as a trend. Um, yeah, I'm totally looking forward to how it plays out. Yeah. If if only they can just you know like play down the uh, perverse, you know, balance more. it yeah. nice, right? I'm curious to see like, much how much right. this will be done because I'm pretty sure the original was super long. I think it was like 30 volumes or something. I I just remember it was long. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, but yeah, so that's that's our thoughts on Mushoku Tensei. It's probably, uh, we'll see, we'll try it on next week and he can give us his thoughts. <laughs> From what I've should... heard, I cannot wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Um, okay. And then we'll just, um, just go down the list of like some other shows real quick. Um, if whoever wants to talk about um, I'm a Spider, so what? Or is that just you, uh, Justin? It's me and Ku, I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to start, Ku? Just yeah. real quick. Um... Yeah. Yeah, so as of right now, uh, it's it's another isekai uh, anime, and we don't know exactly what caused it, mm-hmm. but apparently uh, it starts off with this this high school class in Japan, and all of a sudden, while going through their daily activities, uh, the MC gets transported to another world, and she is a baby spider. She was just hatched. And, uh, you know, nothing crazy, but she's trying to adapt to everything. She picks up what's considered like an OP skill, and she's just trying to figure out how this new world works. And fast forward to, or not fast forward, but they transition to another scene where you see the other classmates that was isekai into this world as well. But mm-hmm. they're uh, they're either like a different uh, gender or they're a different creature as well. And it looks like one of the one of the elf teachers or uh, like elf wizards or whatever. They're going around collecting all these other isekai uh, characters together in a party. And uh, I think that's where the the show left off. Just yeah. basically, like showing but, you the premise of the show. I think that was the one piece for me that kind of kept me interested in terms of you know continuing to watch new, more episodes for it. Was that mm-hmm. you know you have the whole class isekai rather than just you know a singular protagonist as we see with many other isekai shows. Right. Um. And I think also the character Kumiko or Kumiko that gets transferred to the transition to the spider. Um. Uh-huh. I like her comedy a lot. She's very just kind of goes with the flow. Like, oh, I'm a spider now. This is what I have to do now. Like, that's fine mm-hmm. by me. I don't mind. Um, and this has a lot of kind of like um, relations to like modern things that they kind of like slyly add in in terms of like her, how she acts and things like that. So mm-hmm. so there wasn't any kind of like when she actually turned into the spider. She's not just like, what kind of garbage is this? She just kind of went with it. Not yeah, really. Very... It really just transitions. It's like, okay, I'm a spider. Cool. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's the title, friend. So I'm a spider. The original, yeah, I suppose. The original I suppose, title yeah. is Kumo. What was it Kumo Deska, whatever? Or yep. And yeah. Kumo means spider, so that's why her name's Kumoko, like spider child. That's what it means. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Although the uh, the selection of music for the opening and end credits, uh, very questionable. The ending was very interesting. I was, it was long too. I don't know if that's just going to be the normal ending, but that was yeah. definitely longer than you know usual ending song. Are so. the opening good or bad then? Uh, it, it, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, you have to experience yeah. it for yourself. Yeah. We cannot. All right. I, was, I, I, cannot be I just want to say to Justin that there's also been plenty of other isekais where the whole class has been transported. So oh, it's not just okay. the show. So again, these tropes, yeah. man. Yeah, so I don't know if you've ever seen this anime. Uh, I think it's like a year old or so, but it's called like mm-hmm. World's Weakest to Strongest. Oh, no, I haven't. Yeah, so it's basically uh, a whole class gets isekai as well, but basically they're transported over as like, you know, like how they were in the original. Uh, world and then mm-hmm. uh, the guy gets betrayed by his classmate he gets uh you know he's obviously the weakest guy of his classmates and then mm-hmm. he somehow survives the trap or whatever and then he slowly builds himself up to get stronger due to some like crazy mineral or resource that he was able to come across and uh... he's a super buff character and uh he slowly starts to meet up with his classmates again to figure out how to get back to the normal world got uh, it so in comparison to this, I do want to say it's it's not as comedic. It's a, it's a more serious isekai, I, I'd say, with a lot more etchy um, elements to it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there's if I had to like compare the two, I'd say I like the so far. I've liked the start of the other one better than this one. Um, but I do appreciate that they're trying to come off as like a comedic uh, isekai anime. So uh, I guess time will tell us if we like it or not. Is it is it worth checking out? Possibly. Or if you like isekais, I would definitely check it out. I mean, I've only, uh, read, otherwise... I've only read part of the a little bit of the web novel, and it's just like it just seems like more lighthearted, where it's just like her going and just eating everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, I would definitely give it a show. shot and see how you like it. But uh, it's 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 not for everyone. I'll 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 give you that. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see like how Kumiko 
if you know and when she meets the other group like how is that interaction gonna work at all because like you know she's just a tiny spider and then everybody else is either like this bigger animal or just gender swapped so it's like complete opposite you know well the little blue Changes. dragon that was with the guy um uh, i guess that since there is a, a a person that turned into a creature it wouldn't mm-hmm. surprise them as much as true, long as they're true. not afraid of spiders i'm assuming <laughs> right, right? And then based on what you're going, uh, what you see in the opening episodes, apparently there's either three or four other mini spiders that she meets up with. So she might not be the only one in her class that's transformed to a spider. Mm. True, true. Yeah, unless that's just like different personalities, just uh, like, yeah, that's just her different personality showing up in the in the opening or end scene. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't have a lot of high hopes for it, but since it's an Isekai anime, I'll probably watch, watch it just because. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's how we go. Yeah. So that's that's our other Isekai for this season's Mama Spider So What. Um, and then I was I guess I'll talk a little bit about Bam Tier Tomozaki. Like basically, pro gamer, basically his version of their version of Smash. He's like the best Smash player in the world mm-hmm. or Japan, or whatever. But he's just a, a loser. But the second best Ooh. Smash player, like, like, you know, doesn't like that. He's just a loser in real life, and he's trying to help him out. So, basically, he's a loser, but he's trying. So, I'll I'll give it a shot. Uh, no, no, no. He's not trying. He gave up because life is a trash tier game. <laughs> well, he's trying now because he has someone to help him out. So, dude, I was very, I was actually really disappointed. Like that was the girl, that was the uh, the person. I was actually hoping it was going to be somebody else. Like who? Um, like what? What's wrong with the character? I don't know anybody else. Like somebody else. It's just like, um, it's just like. Well, you don't like her, like, like her, her personality, like no, it's, changing it's kind of like or a typical thing. I, I don't know. Where it's just like you see, like the main chick, she acts like all like, you know, like a typical kind of. So like, I mean, this show it's it's basically for like, you know, the shut-ins and like the, all the other people, all the other people in Japan who have trouble making friends and like just I mean, I sticks to anime and games. So it's mainly for them. So. Hopefully yeah. this will show have like you know a positive message just to like you know don't don't be a shut oh, yeah. It does. If if you try hard enough, you too can get a girlfriend by the end of the school year. <laughs> I, I was kind of hoping for more of a triangle though, you know. I mean, it um, might get there. It's only first episode, so. I mean, I guess, but which it, it kind of cut. Which I'm hoping it doesn't. I don't want to try yeah. and Really? I don't know. It I want to be focused on because the the, main, the whole goal is like the him to stop being a loser, and if you had a triangle, yeah. it's just it's just unnecessary. Like unnecessary love triangle though. in there. All right, fine. All right, he's he's he's. he's but I think it's gotta be a triangle now that you mention it. So, <laughs> gotta have a shipping know. battles, the one true <laughs> pair. Oh, okay. I just yeah, think it's I, unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I agree. Yeah, he, he, basically, we're watching this for him to do better. Okay. Hmm. No, but, but, but because am... because people like you, Stren, who demand there be a triangle, there will be one. Actually, I'm... to be fair, I actually normally hate triangles, but for some reason, I was actually disappointed. It was the same girl that was the one we've already saw, like we were we've already seen. I was for some reason hoping for another one, and apparently, I guess I wanted a triangle. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't well, even know it. Uh, I think there's five girls that was uh, showcased in the end credit scene. So uh, a pentagon is what we're looking at here, apparently. <laughs> um Dude, but if, anyone, if anyone if anyone i'm voting for the blue hair chick because you know blue hair i don't really see them like part of it is like is even being like part of like a harbor I, I just assume that she's like her friends and he's just yeah i hope it's like the route like he's just that she's just trying to help him like actually like be comfortable talking to girls not necessarily like trying to romance any of them yeah it's one of those it just feels like none of them can be really even get close to him see i think that's why maybe i was like wanting it, or kind of hoping it was gonna be somebody else so somebody so it would feel like somebody could get closer to that triangle i guess but it just feels like like how they're setting it up like that next person for the triangle is so distant so that's well, yeah he's he's distant to all of them except for this one the only thing that they have in common is the fact that they're both smash players yes they respect so, each other well yeah. psh- that's the one. Th- that's the one thing I want to say about Smash in this world. Like, it's so unrealistic that they would have a ranking system, a good ranking system, and a chat system to talk to people in yeah. a Nintendo online, Nintendo? In Nintendo online game. game. That's the most realistic part of the show. But the real know. part is, are any of them even good at Smash? Yeah, uh, they're the best. What well, are you talking about? I mean, Says according to this best. game, he seems pretty good. Ah, uh, okay. But that you know, all. but Nintendo standards, <laughs> good one. Ranking system, perfect, perfect uh, connection. Good one. Mm-hmm. Being able to chat with people you just play online too—that's funny. I don't know. 
So, yeah, so, I don't know, I don't have much thoughts about this, like, hopefully, I don't know, I'm just gonna mm. see how it goes, and hopefully, Honestly. hopefully the guy stops being a loser, and, like, gets, gets, well, like, I think that's the point, I'm sure he'll get out of his loser and state. And hopefully whoever needs to hear this, like, you know, can take advice from it, too. <laughs> you right, okay. you right, Cause, I got cause, my no, book ready. Because like, I, think, I think the author, <laughs> someone, like, someone um, messaged, like, the author of one of the studios saying, like, how, oh, because of, of what you did, like, I'm actually doing my best to stop being a shut in and oh, actually damn. talk to people. Okay. So. All right. All right. Respect. Respect. So hopefully uh, it gets to the audience it needs to. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> go go ahead, Justin. Uh, just, sorry. I, I think we've kind of been overpowering this section, but if you have anything else. <laughs> no, I, I think we're good. Okay. Uh, it was like another really, really uh, quick thing with like the, uh, like this was the first show I think this season I watched where I, I felt like I like, okay, this is a possible drop for me. But then again, it's been a early, like uh, I guess, like early season so far that there's like half my shows that I haven't watched yet. Well, it's gonna be crowded soon, so uh, probably, I can see you dropping it. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Sren, you don't need this, so you're 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 more than fine to leave the show. Hey, so. But I was there. <laughs> so, That's all that matters. Right, right. I was there. But no, yeah. I mean, no, I, we'll see. I'll give it like. I'm honestly probably give it to like, at least half the season. I think half. Oh my god. Okay. Well, because I want to like the MC, so we'll see. But I'm gonna be very like I don't know. I'm just disappointed on the man. Just like just like who and like Rent a Girlfriend, man. You guys commit so hard <laughs> to these shows. I know, I know, right? No, 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 no. First off, all right, Rent a Girlfriend actually had a lot of uh, like context that we needed to go over. Right? There was a lot of things going on with Rent a Girlfriend. With this, however, you obviously know that you know everything's staged and it's not as realistic as Rent a Girlfriend, but. Uh, you know, I don't know if I call that, it to go from realistic either, but oh, it's so realistic. Okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it, has, it, has, it has some realistic uh parts, but okay, yeah, but there's not as much tension as there was in Rent a Girlfriend. No, there's right? not. Thank god, so... I don't need the tension. <laughs> oh man, know, man. The, the tension was just we had, a, we had a buffoon no. for, a, for an MC, right? Right, um, but yeah, I don't know, we'll see, we'll, we'll see. see. So that's just our thoughts for buy them tier, <laughs> Tomazaki. Because you know, we, we've, we've all been bomb tier at yes. one point. Yes, this just happens to be a bomb tier anime. And then, oh. um, <laughs> God damn it. And then if everyone wants to bring up, <laughs> I don't know who watched Skate, but you guys want to talk about how good it looks? Sure. I mean, it looks so nice. yeah, it's it's very pretty. Um, yeah. I think it's one of those shows, I think, like you guys were saying in, in last week's podcast, where if you're not into skateboarding, it's really kind of a, a tough sell in terms of you know what they're trying to focus on like it's definitely very stylized in that sense where there's kind of this underground circuit of what they call s races <laughs> um but I, I at the end of the day the people that i think are gonna stick with it are one those who just you know are hard fans of bones as an animation studio uh but also those who kind of like they're pretty boy characters at the end of the day I hate to say it but a lot of the characters are just pretty <laughs> boys and they're just like over the top like super lavish type of individuals that have really no business to skateboard in terms of when you think of like what a skateboarder may look like or what they kind of represent but i think that's one of the other draws it's just a, such a complete polar opposite so but we'll but see where america is these are skaters <laughs> yeah. in japan though True, true. I want to know who got the building rights to like wipe out half a mountain to build this <laughs> obnoxious, you know, S arena. Like, no, no, what it's, is it's this? It's an abandoned cave mine, guys. Come on, abandoned uh -huh. cave mine. That is true. Yeah, I mean, see that one guy that they kept on hinting at that wears like the mask or whatever, the pretty boy, like rich boy skater that we'll hopefully oh, learn cherry, more about. Cherry Blossom or Cherry oh, no, 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 that guy. The, the pink haired guy. Well, that's that's one guy, but I'm talking about the guy who had like the 10 monitors set up that was watching the race between Shadow and uh, Dude, the Canadian. He's got money on it. He's oh, got yeah. money on it. Yeah, Actually, yeah no I think that guy's funding everything. He just looks like he's got money. I think even in the <laughs> ending, they like slightly tease at him like skating in the empty pool and then like his bodyguard like blocks the camera. Oh, yeah, no see his face. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll know. see. They, so far, it's actually like really enjoyable to watch, even though I don't really care about this like the story. I'm not really like invested in skateboarding either. I don't really care. Yeah, but even the animation characters. They, you used to have that skater look back there, day. Yeah. Oh day. Yeah, I had the skater look, even though I, I didn't care at all about skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the style. Yeah, anyway, but the, a, um... but the the <laughs> the animation characters, just like how they look, they they, they make my parts move a little bit. That's nice. They're nice. They're pretty boys. That too. Listen to guys, you'll like this show probably. Or if you're a Fujoshi, you'll like this show probably. 
Also, I I feel like it kind of had some like '90s um, like nostalgic vibes to it. You know, like like Avril Lavigne type of vibes. It was kind of nice. I fun. see it. Yeah, Avril Lavigne vibes. Well, she literally had that song called Skater Boy, but it just reminded like the music that they played, the colors, like the color scheme they used, um, j- just so many I different mean... parts of the show. Very much not not the animation style, um, but everything else reminded uh, me of the '90s. I'll just say, like, if you say Skate Boy, I mentioned Tony Hawk, but especially Tony Hawk games. I mean, those were the '90s, weren't they? they were early 2000s, sure, but <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. wasn't, Wait, wasn't, wasn't Avril Lavigne also early, sure? early 2000s as well? Probably. I don't know. I wasn't part of that click, so I have no idea. Okay. Dude, you missed out. Good oh time. yeah, I sure did. <laughs> sure did. But the, the skate the actual skateboarding, like it the animation looks really nice, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. it's super yeah, it stylized. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does yeah, it actually sure. like tell you about skateboarding or is it are you are you just there for as to Not enjoy yet. I'm fairly well though. Okay. Yeah, yeah I might go into yeah. it later. Are, well, like, are, they all, like, are they all athletes? Are they trying to like to show like this rookie who's learning it for the first time or whatever? Uh, I mean, they're they're as much of an athlete as you can see a, a skateboarder be. Yeah. But there is a Canadian snowboarder. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I was yeah. just gonna say too, like I don't know how much they're gonna get into the like actual logistics of skateboarding because they were comparing snowboarding to skateboarding pretty hard. I've done neither, so I can't comment. But I really feel like they're not the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one point I, I really didn't like. Like, there's definitely yeah. those similarities, but to the point of how good they made uh, Langa or that whatever guy, his name yeah. is, it's just, mm-hmm. it was absurd. It's like, that was not possible. <laughs> but hey, I'll go with it. I'll give it to you. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So I guess that's I guess that's it for Skate. And then the only other show I just want to talk lastly is um, Dr. Ramune. I think Koo is the only one who watched it with, as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I guess like short like summary is just basically p- people have problems. It's usually like I guess supernatural, where like because this first this first um, episode was about this girl who kept crying like different condiments, like kept crying like <laughs> like mayonnaise and soy sauce. Yeah. But really, it's because like she was a child actress and like her mom kept forcing her to work when she didn't want to, and then her mom just got greedy and like lost like the important things in life, whatever. So it's mm-hmm. it's very like episode in that regards and so i don't know I yeah actually, to be honest oh. with you i thought it was gonna be more of a serious kind of a darker That's themed show too, but it's much more lighthearted. but uh, this show is completely just going off of like the comedic effect i don't think we can ever take any of these episodes seriously like they even show the preview of the next episode and oh, yeah. i guess i won't <laughs> give it away but it's pretty damn funny God damn, that preview <laughs> I thought, see, yeah. I thought this was gonna be like, yeah, a, a darker show. I thought it was gonna be more romance, like, like about couples and like trying to ask people romance. out. Because they, they said like, like the feelings in your heart, whatever. I thought, I thought it meant like romance. But oh, like, but like uh, it's more, it's yeah. more general emotions. So. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I didn't interpret it that way, but uh, yeah, I just thought it meant that you know, as long as there is like the human heart, right? Like, there's always gonna be these diseases or things that. Uh, that will be there and then for people to solve those that's where these occultist doctors come in so yeah uh, so. yeah i thought it could be more of a serious kind of mystery slash thriller type that's what i was hoping it'd be yeah. yeah but i mean i guess with a name like dr ramuna you can't really expect it to be dark right it's uh it's it's obviously something i was hoping it had some elements but words. it wasn't yeah. there so i mean maybe i'll keep watching it but this might be one one of them i drop so yeah, I know for sure. With, with everything that's going to pop up, I think it just chose a bad time to air itself. I think if it was last season or maybe next season, I'll probably give it more time, but uh, I don't think it's worthwhile to keep up with it. Yeah. So that's just our little... That's it for um, Dr. Ramane. And then, um, Sren, do you want me to end it right now, or should I just jump right into Promise Neverland, and do you want to cut that in in the episode, uh-huh. or what? You can let's see a message. So you can yeah, you can uh because they're basically done. So I need to yeah. I can just end it okay. right now and then yeah, we can do we can do the wrap up then. We can basically say you know do we can do the buys and then, and then do the cutout. You just want to do sep- se- separate videos for Promise Summerland and then Tech and Titan. Sounds good. Okay, we'll so go. we'll wrap it up now. So that's it for this week's episode. Wanna well, thank everyone for watching. Thanks guys. Wanna well, thank the panel for joining me this week. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I really enjoyed it. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it's first week of the new season, so we still got more shows coming next week too. We got a bunch of the sequels, so look forward to that. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mom. Bye.